Uh, you know, a really unique culture with its own set of values has grown up around this plant and around the struggle to uh, free and liberate this plant. And those values, uh, you know, include things like being very inclusive. When you pass a joint around in a circle, you don't leave anybody out, right? Um, and, and being tolerant, right? If somebody hangs on to the joint for a little bit too long, you nudge them gently. You don't slap them across the face, right? Uh, so we're tolerant uh, and we're inclusive. Uh, we resolve things by talking about it, by peaceful dialogue uh, with one another. We appreciate each other and we try to have fun uh, while we're working hard. Um, there's this very special and beautiful culture. One of the, the great things that's been happening to me is interacting with professionals who are coming into the industry for the first time and almost universally they talk about how much happier they are, how more real they can be uh, in, in this environment. So uh, learn this culture, carry this culture, and make it a part of what you do. We've faced a, a lot of challenges um, since we opened Harborside 10 years ago. Some of them have been political and, and people are fairly familiar well with them. Uh, but there have been a lot of other challenges that we've had. Uh, one of the challenges has uh, been uh, getting access to investment capital. That's changed now. Uh, but for many years, we were really had to do any kind of growth that we wanted to do purely on our own cash flow. Uh, so that was uh, uh, difficult. Um, and when we first opened, we were not allowed to advertise. So there was no advertising that was allowed by the city of Oakland for medical cannabis of any type whatsoever. So over the first few years, we didn't do any advertising. Well, then it became possible to advertise. And we were already a pretty large and well-established business, but we didn't have a marketing department. We didn't really know how to do that because we had not been allowed to do it. So we had to play catch up and figure that out. Now it's something that we do quite well, but it took us a little while to get to get the hang of that. Um, we have some entrepreneurial challenges that are sort of wonderful to have. One of our challenges at Harborside is line management. Uh, we have so many people coming to the store that our sales are limited sometimes by the amount of people that we can serve uh, in a given hour. So uh, learning how to create a service model that's more efficient, that delivers the same kind of quality of service that we want our patients to enjoy, uh, but maybe in a little bit more rapid way, has also been a challenge. Uh, reconciling uh, innovation with the central values of what we're doing, it's always uh, a challenge and a question we look at. Well, probably my most spectacular failure in the cannabis space was a company called Canby, which I launched in 2009. It was a cannabis dispensary consulting business. And we were a bit ahead of our time. About 18 months after we launched the company, the four U.S. attorneys in the state of California announced that they were going on a campaign to close down the industry. Uh, that put a little bit of a dent in, in our business. So Canby never uh, really came to fruition, but it did serve as the model and the inspiration for a lot of other companies uh, that are out there doing the same kind of thing now, like Forefront Consulting, for example. When professionals come to me from outside the industry, they're looking for advice, the first thing I do is a basic reality check. Do you understand this is still illegal under federal law? Uh, do you understand that it may not be legal in the state uh, that you're in? Uh, and then I sort of check out and see what they're thinking about in terms of a business strategy. A lot of folks who have been successful in other businesses uh, think that they can apply those same strategies in a kind of mechanical way to cannabis. And it, it's frequently not true. Sometimes it is, but frequently it's not because cannabis is this incredibly uh, complex creature where you have interlocking uh, regulation and stigma and opportunity and change public attitudes and new regulations. So it's a very, very complex environment to negotiate successfully. I don't think there's any kind of person that I don't enjoy working with. I mean, the, the people that I enjoy working with the most are people who are passionate about cannabis, who understand this plant 
as a real benefit for the world and who are interested in creating business models that make money and allow them to provide for their families, uh, but also uh, are geared towards um, creating business models that are going to help us create a new kind of industry and a new kind of world. There's just a, a ton of unmet needs in the cannabis industry, and they're, they're all opportunities, too, of course. Uh, we've been illegal since the birth of modern business systems and technology. Uh, almost everything that you can think of, uh, from software to manufacturing equipment to uh, recruiting techniques uh, uh, to <laughs> formulations, everything is open. So if you have a passion, if there's something that you really, really enjoy doing, uh, turn that passion to cannabis. Uh, you will probably, looking through your own special lens, uh, be able to find your own area of unmet need uh, and turn it into your own opportunity. The biggest pitfall that I see in cannabis entrepreneurship is really family life and sanity. Um, the industry is growing at such a rapid pace. There's so many exciting things going on that most of the people I know who are involved uh, are working 14, 16, 18 hour days, six, seven day weeks, and aren't paying as much attention to their health or their families as really they should be. So I, I think that's a pitfall that people need to take seriously and be careful about. Uh, cannabis isn't going away. It's been with us for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, you will have plenty of time to make uh, your stake in this industry. Uh, take care of yourself along the way. It's really important. It's, I think it's important for people who are coming into the industry who haven't had a lot of experience with cannabis to take time to familiarize themselves with the science and the history about this plant. There's been a huge amount of misinformation, disinformation, and just lies that have been told about the plant over the years. And the only way to counteract them is to learn the truth and, and figure it out. Um, and you'll find that this is uh, not just a commodity or a way to make money or the fastest growing industry in America. Uh, this plant is something that's very, very special, uh, that's doing a noble and necessary work in the world. Um, learn about the history of the people who realized that some time ago. Uh, look at the kinds of companies that we've built and the kind of values that we've tried to incorporate into them because really that will be your greatest opportunity. Uh, not making a pile of money, although you can do that. Uh, your greatest opportunity here is that we all have an opportunity to become the kind of people we really want to be if we take it.